All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to show you today how to hook up your PlayStation 4 controller to your Windows PC so that you can play whatever game that you want using DS4 Windows. It's a pretty simple process. It just requires you to download three things. The first thing you're going to want to download is the DS4 Windows client itself. It comes in a zip file. Just grab the 64-bit version here. If you Google DS4 Windows to find this download page, when you Google it, DS4 Windows, you want the one here on GitHub that says it's from Ryochan7. I don't know who is in charge of the DS4 Windows website, but it's unrelated to the actual developer. That'll take you to this page. You want to download the 64-bit version, and then you'll also want to download and install the .NET 8 framework from Microsoft, which is what this program uses to run and to install stuff on your computer. The last thing that you want to install is the Vision Bus driver, which is made by Nefarious Software. You can, you can look up Vision Bus Download, and it should take you to another GitHub page from Nefarious on GitHub that looks like this page right here. Go ahead and download and install this one here at the top, the Vision Bus 1.22 x64 x86 version. Once you have done all of that, and you've got all that stuff downloaded and installed, you'll have a folder that kind of looks like this, where you've got the runtime here, Vision Bus, optional hid hide driver, in case you get duplicates for your inputs, but that's a different tutorial. And then you've also got the DS4 Windows program itself here. To run DS4 Windows, all you have to do is extract it using 7-zip or a similar zip program to a folder of the same name. Inside of this folder, you'll find a slightly rainbowy logo next to a program called DS4 Windows. It's an application file. We'll just go ahead and double click on that and run it. When it runs for the first time, it's going to ask you where you want to save your settings. I always put them in the program folder over my app data folder, because then if I have to delete it and reset everything, because sometimes hiccups happen, with third-party drivers, then I don't have to mess around having to hunt down all the files and delete them. They're all in the same place. The first thing that's going to pop up once I tell it to keep the settings in the program folder is what devices do I need to enable support for with DS4 Windows? So by default, the only one that's enabled is PlayStation 4 controller support, which is what DS4 device support means. Uh, if you're using a PS5 controller, you'll want to enable DualSense. If you're using the Switch Pro controller, you'll want to enable the Switch Pro device. If you're using Joy-Cons, you'll want to enable that here. Or if you're using a PlayStation 3 controller, you'll want to do that at the bottom, although that's going to require a completely different mini driver, which I'm not going to cover in this tutorial today. But I'm only going to be doing the play PlayStation 4 controller, so I'm only going to leave the default DS4 device enabled and then click Close. Once you click close, this window should open along with another separate pop-up. That separate pop-up, if you don't see it, is under settings. On the right-hand side, it'll be the controller slash driver setup button. It'll ask you for administrator permission to open this pop-up. Just go ahead and click yes. And then you might see this on your first time starting up DS4 Windows. Uh, if you've actually gone through and installed all the stuff I told you to earlier, not only should this not show up, but it's also not important. Otherwise, if you haven't already installed the Vision Bus driver, uh, your Windows should already come with the drivers for the Xbox 360 controller, which is required for the software to work correctly. And then these other two separate drivers are completely optional, and you can ignore those and then click Finished. Otherwise, uh, if you have a controller, hooked up or plugged into your computer, you can click start, and then it should show up in this list right here. If nothing is showing up, it's probably because you don't have a controller plugged in or hooked up to your computer. Let's go ahead and do that now. So I have my PlayStation 4 controller in my hand, and a lot of people like to hook this up via Bluetooth. I'm gonna show you how to do that now. Go ahead and open up your Windows, Bluetooth, and other devices menu inside of the settings. 
you can just Google or not Google, but search for this page in the Windows search bar in the lower left hand corner of your screen. Once you've got this open, go ahead and grab your controller and then press the PlayStation button in the center between the two joysticks and the share button in the upper left corner of the touchpad. When you press and hold on both of those, the little light bar in the back should start blinking like you're at a techno rave club. And then you can click on the add Bluetooth or other devices button at the top of this page. Then from here, we're gonna say Bluetooth, and then it should be able to search for and find our PlayStation controller, which is just listed as a generic wireless controller. Give it a click, and then it should automatically pair with your computer. If it's having trouble pairing with your computer, or if you do this process and it doesn't show up still on your computer, you're gonna have to hard reset it using the button on the back. If you flip your controller over, on the back of the controller, there's a little hole on the right hand side. There's a little button in there, press and hold a clip or a pin in there for a count of 12, and that should factory reset your controller. And you can try plugging it in or connecting it with Bluetooth again to make sure it's behaving. If it's connected properly, it should glow with a blue light or some kind of colored light on the back. And you can go ahead and close this Bluetooth window. If you've also done this correctly, you should have a bunch of pings and dings and bings as a bunch of stuff pops up on your computer to let you know that they've installed and gotten this device ready for you to use and then it's all ready to go. That's normal, just ignore those. They're just telling you that you've done this correctly. And then once you've got it plugged in and set up correctly, it should show up on this list here. This is my PlayStation 4 controller and it's currently using the default profile that comes with DS4 Windows, which treats this controller like a generic Xbox controller in order for you to play all the games on your computer. If you don't see this on the list, make sure in the lower right hand corner that the start button says stop, which means that it's currently running and looking for a controller. Otherwise, if this doesn't say stop, it means it's not currently running, go ahead and click the start button so it is running. And then you should be able to see your controller it should be connected to the default settings profile and you can edit that profile by clicking edit and you can rebind by clicking on the button here and then selecting a different button on this selection menu you can quickly rebind any button on your playstation 4 controller to anything else i do recommend just using the default profile though because it just hooks it up so that it mirrors an xbox controller which is the way that it pretends and is the most usable for all the different programs on your computer. You might be thinking to yourself, Larry, that doesn't sound very useful. Like I wanna play my PlayStation 4 controller on my PC. Why would I wanna see Xbox buttons when I'm playing games? Unfortunately, if the game was compatible enough to display PlayStation buttons, it probably already had PlayStation support to begin with and you wouldn't have needed to use this software in the first place. So to work around that, it just pretends it's an Xbox controller, which is the most universally supported controller on Windows PC. If you want to experiment and see if the game you're trying to play would work if you use this as a PlayStation 4 controller, you can click Edit to open up the Settings profile. You can go to Other tab here, and then underneath of this other tab at the top, Virtual Controller Settings, you can tell it to emulate a DualShock 4 controller rather than an Xbox 360 controller, and then you can hit save. That might work if it suddenly stops working and your game doesn't know that this is a controller anymore. Just reset it back to what it was by clicking Edit, Other, and then selecting from this emulated controller pull-down, select the Xbox 360 option again, and then click Save. So that should pretty much cover most of the people who want to set up and use their PlayStation 4 controller on your Windows PC. You don't have to plug this in with Bluetooth. You can plug it in with USB. If it's working correctly, you should be able to charge it while you play with it over Bluetooth, but sometimes it doesn't work correctly and it borks and you'll have to disconnect it from Bluetooth and just run it with the cable while it's charging if you want to do both at the same time. I don't know why this bug happens and there's not really a workaround for it. Sometimes it's just like that. So until next time, I'm your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you next time. Bye everybody and have a good one.